one, sorry, the S1H is um, duration free. So it's down to the amount of SD cards that you um, hot swap into the dual SD slots. The S1 has only got uh, uh, XQD and one SD card slot uh, in this particular body. Let's show you that. Slightly bigger than XQD for photography, if you're doing raw, um, um, fast uh, recording of uh, raw photography. Um, you need a high, that high burst rate, needs obviously a faster car. Having said that, SD cards are coming up to nowadays up to very, very high speeds beyond V90. Um, very, very quick and able to write, certainly with this camera, long duration recordings. If you're doing events, weddings, you know, long recording sessions, you can do it quite comfortably with this camera. Down to record up to 30 minutes on these, 15 minutes in uh, 6K photo mode. And this will go on forever as long as you've got the battery juice uh, or SD card, you can keep feeding and not swapping. You know, you can just keep going. So that's the first thing which is great about this camera. The second thing is color science. I was talking to you earlier about, uh, there's the quick, before we get there, very few differences. So here's the S1R. Top end, mainly for uh, photographic, S1, a mixture of both photography and videography. And now with the um, S1H, specifically really for cinematographers, pro filmmakers, people who really want to go up a level, um, but it still retains the photographic capabilities, certainly of the S1, um, with providing you really good 14-bit imagery and you can do time lapse, which is a very important aspect of um, filmmaking and photography. Um, I know that you just bought the S1, haven't you, recently? How are you finding it? Loving it? Yeah, I mean, it's a big step up since yeah. the last thing I bought ten, nine, nine years ago. So right. So it's your first camera in nearly ten years. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, yeah Things it's have changed. Times have changed. Two quantum levels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to go on for a lot there. But um, you're enjoying all the benefits now, all that so change. And the way you've got the camera, the way you've got the color sign. And again, it's been improved even further in the S1A. The very cam engineers of work, the top end cinematographers, have, been, have uh, engineered and worked on this sensor in the S1A. So we get the benefit of a, um, their experience in a bigger sensor. This is bigger than the Varicam 35, bigger than the Varicam Pure. That's only a Super 35 sensor. This is a full frame sensor. We've got dual image stabilization, yeah? And uh, on lens, on certain lenses. Yeah, not that one. <laughs> and uh, yeah. and uh, in body image stabilization. So I can do pans, movement, and there's no jerky, you know, like you get on other cameras. Um, you don't actually need a gimbal for certain shots. You know, if you're quite steady, you can, you can produce a really nice flowing motion, you know, um, without using a gimbal. Of course, people do not use gimbals if they're doing a lot of faster movement, um, you know, and uh, there's every good reason to use them. So, um, but these other functions of, uh, which I want to talk about today, which really bring this camera up as a forefront. There's the chief difference between the S1R very graphic camera. It does do a little bit of video. It excels, obviously, in photographic terms. It can do 47.3 megapixels, a slightly bigger sensor. It can do a 187 high-resolution photo mode. The S1 is uh, more, uh, more for low light work. So it's a 24.2 megapixel sensor. The pixel photos are actually bigger, which means more light gets into those photo buckets, which means in low light, in the dark, it performs admirably well. The S1H goes a stage further. It's a highly tuned dual ISO sensor. Uh, you know, 4,000, 5,000, even 10,000 ISO is amazing. And it's better than the current full frame market, the uh, A7S II, in terms of performance in low light, um, in my own testings and what I've seen. Um, and I'm going to look at a few graphs probably later to show the sweet spots as well. So in the middle on the S1 hybrid, the S1 has clear differences, 6K cameras. This is a 6K camera now, um, and that means you can shoot the full open gate, the full size of the sensor. That means if, you do, if you're doing HD or 4K UHD, you can use that to 
crop out or do post um, production digital effects without any loss of resolution. We really engage and use that 6K facility. Or obviously, you can master your uh, films um, in 6K. Or we can extrapolate single frames, photographers, from that 6K image and get really high resolution, 18 megapixels, Carol, yeah? Yeah. Uh, in size, um, JPEG, which is pretty darn good. They look as good as in my opinion, some of the raw photos. Yeah, but running at 50 frames per second or uh, 25, 30p, 24p, um, obviously Super 35 in uh, 50 frames per second, uh, 60 frames per second. We also do HD with sound at 120 frames per second now, and the dynamic range is incredible. It's noise free at those dual ISO settings, which I'm going to show you. 120 at NTSC mode, 100 in PAL mode. You can switch this with the frequency range um, from 24 cinema mode, uh, 50 hertz, PAL mode, 60 hertz, NTSC mode. And that comes with a host of a four of different codecs and frame settings, which we'll show you shortly. So, loads of clear differences from the S1. Uh, this comes already in built and feed on uh, a logarithmic curve for uh, uh, recording. Um, all the, uh, the, the all the high uh, contrast gamma recording with 10 bit 42. Uh, we have a ProRes raw video option for the HDMI um, coming very shortly with Atomos and a new firmware update. For this will be able to record up to 6K raw 24p. I've, I've been showing 30p raw 5.9k at IBC in Amsterdam, which is working really well in the current tests. So that's going to be happening soon. Um, with the raw recording, it means it's even better than the codex recording in camera. So really high quality, and you can pull back you know, temperature, you pull back the highlights, and you get better detail in the shadows. Um, and fans, across all these cameras, they all share one common thing. For the best EVF in the market today, 5.76 megapixel. You know, I've got a, 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 a security graphical somewhere on here. Uh, which is this one here. This is an HD uh, resolution only, EVF, still like EVF. It costs about two grand these cinema ones, so two grand for that. This comes in as part of the camera, 5.7K, an insane resolution with a 0.78 magnification. If you want to be experienced good? 5.7 yeah, 5.7 yeah, megapixels, yeah. <laughs> I'm getting yeah, cases yeah, stuck. Megapixels, yeah. 5.7 megapixels, that's only HD, 1920, 10 So if you haven't had a chance to look through, this is the S1, but the viewfinder is identical. Pass this S1H round as we talk. 